what's up you guys? Typically I would film the intro at the end of a tutorial then edit it to the beginning of the video so that you can see exactly what the look is going to turn into but today I don't know exactly what that look is going to be so I thought it would be fun if we could like go on that journey together. So if you're watching this it means that it either A turns out and I think it's a cute look and a good tutorial or B it's a fail but it's like a funny fail. Those are really the only two options that I would upload this video if it just flat out sucks I probably wouldn't put it up but I'm not used to like starting off just going straight into the intro on a tutorial like this and I feel like my intros are always so long and I don't know what I typically say but I feel like that's all I had to say for the intro so like comment like subscribe you know all of that down below but I'm gonna go ahead and put my handy dandy hairband on this just keeps my hair out of my face and also keeps me from getting foundation like all in my hair because I'm really bad at that I am always impressed at people who can do their makeup like with their hair just like half in their face and they just keep like pushing it away and doing their makeup I'm like I cannot handle that also my backdrop is gonna give me like an ulcer it's stressing me out so much but I just finally decided like your life is not that stressful you are filming a makeup tutorial it doesn't matter if there are wrinkles in your backdrop like you will survive so I'm leaving it but I'm just letting you guys know it's like a touchy subject for me so if you really want to like get under my skin go leave a comment about how it's bothering you I'm gonna start with eyes even though I want to start with face because I have some sections that I'm breaking out and I just kind of want to cover it up but I am gonna start with eyes because I think they're gonna be a little more dramatic so I'm just gonna take some tape and I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand first to kind of like eliminate the majority of the sticky on it and then I'm going to just line it up from where like my lower lash line comes and follow up towards the outer point of my brow and I go a little bit further out when I'm doing this like I don't take it right to the corner of my brow because I extend my brows just a little bit and I also feel like if I took it straight up it would be like a really high up cat eye how does this look Ooh. so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side I know a lot of people have strong feelings about using tape for their eyes. Uh, people either love it or they absolutely hate it. I like it for certain looks. I don't think it's something that you need to do like every single day, but I don't mind it if, you know, you're just trying to do like a fun look. Ooh, look at that. So now I'm just gonna take some primer. This is the Too Faced Shadow Insurance and I'm just gonna swipe that all over my lids up to my brows this is just going to give us a good base to work with it's going to make your eyeshadows last all day and also make the pigments a little bit richer i guess like brighter but not just for bright eyeshadows like all of them. Next, I'm going to take the color pregame, which is right here in the Urban Decay Naked Ultimates palette. This is just going to be my all over base. It's a matte shade and it's just a good color to just apply over that primer. I like to go over the primer with one solid shadow before I go in with any of my colored shadows because I feel like it just makes everything blend more effortlessly over top of it. So obviously I'm going for like a sharp eye look, hence why I'm using tape, but I think I'm gonna go for like a warm kind of smoky but then like pop some glitter in the inner corner and maybe take it into the middle I'm not exactly sure but I do know that I'm gonna go in with my favorite warm shadow of all time this is a makeup forever m600 someone told me recently that this was discontinued but I went on their website and I saw it so I'm not sure if they're just like selling out what they have and then they're not gonna make anymore but that would actually make me really sad because this is one of my favorite eyeshadow colors and I did just wash my makeup brushes so that you guys would think that I have my life together um spoiler alert I just did it for the video so I'm gonna start on this outer corner and just start buffing this into the crease and I'm keeping it pretty low because I'm probably gonna go in with more of like a transition color in the middle to blend it out like in between the crease and the brow bone so I'm really just trying to get this color onto the crease so I'm just going to use small circular motions and then get some windshield wiper action up in there and just be placing this I'm trying to figure out what I'm actually gonna do. I feel like I'm just like doing what I typically do to kind of like buy me time while I figure out what the crap I wanna do with my face. This brush doesn't have any color in it. By the way, I'm just taking it to kind of do a little, you know, blendy blend. I'm starting to see some things come together. 
and I think I'm gonna add some cool tones. As soon as I was like, I'm not gonna do cool tones, I only like warm tones on my eyes, I'm like, I think this look I'm gonna go like both ways. Why can't I find any of my brushes? Out of this same Urban Decay Naked Basics palette, I'm gonna take these two colors right here. They're more on the cool side. They're also pretty light, so I feel like if I don't like them, it's not gonna like totally take over the look. But I just wanna see, and this is a um, thinner brush. This is a MAC 217, just so you guys know. And the one before was the Sephora Pro Smoky Crease, perfect name. But this one's a little bit smaller and I'm really just gonna focus this one in the actual crease, not going any higher. And I just wanna kind of deepen this up with a cooler tone without getting too crazy. I feel like you can't even really see that. Cool, that's the kind of cool tones I like to use. The ones that you can't see. And then I'm just gonna lightly take this brush and whatever is left over and just kind of feather it from the top of the crease to just kind of give it a little bit of a softer gradient. Okay, next I'm gonna take a pencil brush. This one is from Ish, but it doesn't say anything on it, but I'm pretty sure it would just be considered a pencil brush. And I'm going to go in, I don't really love any of these shades. You know what? Jaclyn's gonna come through for us. Now I'm gonna take my Jaclyn Hill by Morphe palette and I'm gonna take these three colors over here. I don't know exactly which one I'm gonna be using. Also, this color is a really good dupe for M600 if you don't have that by Makeup Forever, but you do have this palette that is a pretty good dupe. I'm gonna kind of take these three colors, mix them together. I don't know what their names are because I have the original palette that doesn't have the names on the back of the palette. I know the new ones that you can get at Ulta do, but I bought this before those came out. So I have no idea what the name is because I lost that card like 15 minutes after I got this palette. Okay. So I'm going to start on the outer V and start deepening this up. I'm really just placing the product with this brush and then I'll go in with a different brush to blend it out. And this is more just like a precise applicator. Sounds like a tampon commercial. Kind of taking this along the lash line also, as you can see there. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the smaller crease brush that I was using, the MAC 217, and I'm just gonna kind of blend these edges out a little bit. One thing I do really like about Jaclyn's shadows is they do tend to blend pretty easily. I'm liking the shape of these, I'm gonna apply a little bit more of this color because I feel like when I blended it, it lost a little bit of its intensity that I was enjoying. So far, I'm happy with the shape that I'm getting and the smokiness and the color, so I wanna go on and move on to the fun part, which is the glitter lid. So I am going to take some concealer to carve out the area that I want to put it. This is the Bobbi Brown Instant Full Cover Concealer. I actually don't really like this concealer for my face or like under my eyes or anything, but I do like it because it is a little bit tacky for doing anything on the eyes when I'm gonna use concealer. So I'm gonna start by definitely applying it on the inner portion of my lid. Oh, coming! I just got a package delivered, which meant a knock on the door and some barking dogs. So there might be some residual barks for a couple of minutes because they're not sure that the person is gone. But like I said, I'm just putting this on the inner corner. I'm going up onto my crease a little bit because I feel like, I don't know if I would consider my eyes, I don't think they're hooded. I think I just have like smaller eyelids. And so I feel like you don't really get the full effect of whatever I'm putting on the lids if I really just put it on my actual eyelids. So I kind of fake it a little bit and I'm going to take I know there's no one here I'm so sorry oh my gosh Teddy's crying he thought there was a friend for him I wonder where I want to stop like do I want to stop halfway or do I want to go a little bit more I think I'm gonna go a tiny bit more on closer to like the lower lash line and kind of like fade this up I feel bad Teddy's crying because he thought there was like a friend at the door for him and then I just opened it and took the package and then the friend left and he's upset now. 
Ooh, I've never done this shape before, but I think I'm gonna like the way it kind of like, I don't know, it looks a little bit geometric to me. Maybe I'm just staring at my face for too long. I'm going in with the Stila Magnificent Metals. This is in the color Kitten Karma. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this right on top of the concealer. Ooh, I'm loving it all ready. You can use a brush for this part if you want. I do have a little baby brush in my hand so that I can pick some up off the applicator if I want to and place it a little more precisely. I like that this color has like a tiny bit of a pink tint to it so that if this is like a Valentine's Day look, you know, you get a little bit of that if that's what you're going for. But I feel like it's also good for just any time you just want to have glitter eyeballs. I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side and then I will be right back. So I took this one a little bit further out on the lid, so I'm just going to fix this one up on this side to match. I'm not gonna put any concealer down. I think I'm just gonna extend this a little bit and hopefully it'll work. So I'm just feathering this outer corner color ever so slightly onto the edge of this, just so that it looks like they meet and kind of blend together instead of it just looking like the, um, glitter section is just laying on top of the darker section. So I've decided that I want to keep this edge right here pretty sharp just because the whole thing's kind of like a sharp eye and I just really like the look of it. But you can obviously blend it out more if you want to. Pretty much every tutorial I've ever done, I blend like everything super, super together. So I feel like this is going to be like my one tutorial where I have like sharp lines going on. So I'm just going to go all out. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my eyeliner while I still have the tape on just because it will help me, you know, get that perfect eye wing and then we will move on to the face. What eyeliner am I gonna use? Don't you hate when one eye looks better than the other? Like I'm just gonna keep kind of tilting my head this way because I feel like I like that eye better than that eye. Maybe I can fix it up in a minute. Okay, I'm gonna move on. I feel like anytime I use any glitter on my eyes and then I go to put on eyeliner, the glitter kind of like mixes with the eyeliner and then it makes the eyeliner glittery and I don't really like that. I want like a solid line of the black liner. So the first thing I do is go down and just do like a baby liner. So you can see I've done it on that eye, but not that eye. And I haven't added a wig or anything. All I've done is kind of like my crumb coat. So you know when you're icing a cake and you do like a thin layer of icing first to catch all the crumbs and then you go on and ice the cake. But if you just went on as one swoop, there would be like crumbs mixed into your icing. That's kind of what I do, but for my eyeballs. So I'm just doing a thin layer of the Kat Von D Tattoo liquid eyeliner just to kind of catch that. And then I'm gonna go in and actually do like my winged liner. So I'm just really making sure that the crumb coat is dry and hopefully that will hold the majority of the glitter down underneath. Sometimes a little bit still peeks through, but I feel like it's a lot better than just doing one coat if you actually go in and do two coats. So to do my actual like wing on my cat eye, I'm using the Ico Black Magic Liquid Eyeliner Plus Eyelash. It has a super thin tip and I find that it's just a great eyeliner. On the second coat, you can literally watch it covering up some of the glitter that's like stuck in the first coat, which I just, I love that so much. And I know a lot of people say not to tug on your eyes when you're doing your eyeliner because it can create premature wrinkles. I know I've said that in videos before, but but sometimes I want to live for today and worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Oh, we got some more glitter in here. Now I'm going to take my eyelashes. I have the Ardell Wispies and also the Ardell number 105 in black. And I'm going to layer these on top of each other. I'm going to put the Wispies on top of the 105 pair. And I just find that it's easier for me to use two pairs of lashes that have like a really thin band and make my own like kind of thicker band on it than to get the lashes that actually have a really thick band. I don't know why, but I've just always found it easier. So I'm just going to glue the 105 underneath the wispies, plop those on my eyes, and I'll be right back. So this section of the eyes are done. I'm gonna go ahead and carefully take off this tape. I'm just trying to hold over here so it really doesn't tug. So now I get to move on to the face, which I'm so excited about because it's just gonna like tie everything together. So I'm gonna start off with foundation, which I actually have a sample of. Where did I put it? This is the Fenty Beauty in number 170 because I have number 
200 but I felt like it was just a little bit too dark on me even though I was color matched to it so I went in and I asked them to recolor match me she color matched me to 170 so I'm going to try this today and then if I like it I'll go get you know an actual full size of it. I'm gonna work this in smaller areas because I do know that this foundation dries on my skin pretty quickly. So I'm just going to apply some to the edge of my face and then I have a fresh Real Techniques complexion sponge which I get so excited about because I feel like after you've used them, even if you immediately wash it, they just never look as fresh as they did um, at the beginning, you know, and I've already primed my skin. It's part of like my morning skincare routine and I'm not going to get too up close to my eyes because I'm going to take some concealer there anyways and I just want to make sure that I'm not like messing up any of the shape. So I'm just going to be putting this on. This color definitely looks like it matches me better than the other color for sure. This might be my true match for my like natural skin tone. I've been staring at this acne mark on my chin the entire time I was doing my eyes and I'm just so happy that I'm able to cover it up right now. I mean, I can still see it, but it's not as noticeable. Look at that, I have such sensitive neck skin. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it on camera, but I just like touch my neck and it gets red. So I will add a little bit of bronzer onto my neck just to make this color match me. I still think it is a little bit too dark, but it's not nearly as dark as the 200 color is on me. So now I'm gonna go in with my concealer, Tarte Shape Tape in the color light and I'm gonna apply this underneath my eyes, obviously, and then also on some of the high points of my face where I wanna put it. I'm not taking this directly up to the line just because I feel like then it will kind of like blend too close, but I am taking it, you know, up that area. And then I'm going to take this little baby Real Technique sponge and just start blending this out. I like that this sponge has a little sharp side to it so that I can get right up against that line. You guys are gonna say I'm imagining things and that this foundation is the exact same as the other one, it's just a different color, but I swear it is like a different formulation. The way it is settling into my pores, like in this area and the way it's like looking on my forehead, I swear that is not the way my other color looks in this foundation and it's the exact same thing, just a different shade. So I don't know what's going on with that. I'm gonna try it again before I actually commit to buying an entire new bottle of it. But I love the way the 200 sits on my skin and I got that right when it came out. And then now this one is definitely not doing the same exact thing. I'm gonna go ahead and set my under eye concealer with the Laura Mercier Secret Under Eye Brightening Powder. This has tiny little reflective flecks in it that kind of bounce the light back and just make your under eyes look a little bit lighter and brighter. Sometimes it gets a little bit of flashback in flash photography and sometimes even on camera, it looks like there's a little bit of a white cast, but in person I think it looks really good. And I wear it every day even though sometimes it has a little bit of a bounce back. I don't know. I just, I like it. It's seriously so soft and it also keeps my under eye concealer in place all freaking day. I've been using this for like, I want to say seven years now, every single time I do my makeup. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of the Laura Mercier translucent face powder and I'm just going to tap that into my brush. And then I mainly set the T-zone area and then I just dust a little bit on the edges. I think because I had oily skin for so long and I had to powder my face, this is just like one of those steps that I feel like it's not complete if I don't do it. But I know that a ton of people that have dry skin say that they don't even use any powder on their face. So I don't know, I might transition to that because my skin has definitely gotten so dry, but I just feel like I can't not put some powder on. And then for bronzer, I am taking the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil in light medium, and this is an absolutely perfect color for me. I love 
the warmth, but it's also very light because I am, as I've said in like every video, and as you guys can see, I am pretty pale. So I feel like sometimes bronzers just look like so harsh on me. So I'm gonna use this just to kind of contour my cheekbones a little bit. I almost use it kind of as a blush too. I am gonna put another blush on, but I feel like I put it kind of in the same area. I also bronze right around my hairline, and I feel like wearing this headband just makes it so easy. I'm gonna take it down my neck a little bit because my neck is always lighter than everywhere else. I'm gonna go in with Dallas Blush by Benefit. I love this blush so much. And I just put a little bit kind of on the apples of my cheeks and then work it back. This color is so freaking pretty. Now it is my favorite step of my entire face and that is always highlighter. This is Citrine by Jouer. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that, dust it right on my cheekbones, oh my word. Look at that. I feel like this is a really great highlighter if you like kind of like almost that wet look and it's just so freaking pretty. I'm also gonna put just a little bit of this above the arch of each of my brows, just whatever's left over on my brush. I don't even know if you're able to see it, but I just like it. And then I'm gonna take the brush that I'm gonna use to put my highlight on my eyes. This one right here, this is the Pro Featherweight Crease that does not have the washi tape on it. And I'm gonna take just a tiny bit of this and put it right on the tip of my nose and then like right here on this bridge section. I don't take it all the way down, I just kind of do it here and then like up here. And then I'm also gonna do this under my brows. <gasps> Sorry, I know it's not that dramatic, I just really freaking love it. I love a good upper lip highlight, I feel like you can't have too much, like just keep going. Okay, maybe you can have too much, but like, now I'm going to do my brows. I've been using the NYX eyebrow marker. I have two different shades. They are in medium and deep. So I start off with the medium one and kind of like fill in the entire brow. And then I go in with the deep and just do some light hair strokes just to give it a little bit more dimension. So I didn't really alter the shape that much except for maybe took the tail down a little longer than it is naturally. I'm really just filling in kind of the natural shape that I have going on right now. You know what I want more than like anything right now is microbladed eyebrows. I've been doing so much research on it. If anyone has had it done, please let me know what you think about it like personally down below. Next, I'm gonna go in with the deep color and I'm just gonna add a few hair strokes. I just feel like this gives it a little bit of a different color, a different dimension, and I don't do it all over because I feel like they get a little too dark. I just kind of go like here and there. It's weird, I feel like I'm actually just filling in my brows with a liquid liner. Now I'm gonna go in with the Clear Brow Gel by Benefit Ready Set Brow, I think it's called, yep. I knew it. And I'm just going to set these bad boys. So I kind of comb them up and out. They're definitely twins today, not sisters, but you know, what can I say? So now I have to decide what I'm going to do on the lower lash line, because I really want to smoke this up a bit. So I think I'm going to start off by doing a black pencil liner. Yes, this is by Rimmel London. It is the Exaggerate Waterproof Eye Definer in black, or whatever they call black in Oh, number 262, blackest black. And I'm going to place this on my waterline. I know so many people don't like putting black on their waterline. They don't like when I put black on my waterline, but I, ooh, I just got a little nail indent. Um, I do like it. You know what, I'm gonna highlight the inner corner with my citrine highlight that I was using and like a super duper small brush. I'm just gonna highlight the inner corner. So I'm not sure. I don't think I wanna bring any of the glitter down on the lower lash line. I was thinking maybe I would kind of like follow the same, um, what's it called? Like shape, like do glitter here and then do the darker color on the outer corner. But I'm thinking I might not want to do glitter. I might just kind of use this highlighter. 
I also feel like I really like it right now and I just don't trust myself not to just mess it up at this point. Oh, this lash is coming up a tiny bit. Okay, I was like, I can see it in the camera, but I can't see it in the mirror. I'll fix it. Yes! Okay, now I'm going to take a liner brush right here and I'm gonna take those same colors from the Jaclyn palette that I used on my eye and I'm just going to blend that on mainly the outer corner. I'll probably bring it in a little bit, but not too far. And I'm gonna start off using a really defined pencil brush and then I'll go in and kind of blend it out a little bit. Ooh, I like this brush. This is also by Ish Beauty and um, I'm using it for the first time and I really, really like it. It's like not so thin that you get like such a tiny line, but it's thin enough that you get like a really precise line right where you want it. And I like that better than using like a bigger brush that automatically kind of blends it for you, but then I feel like it makes it a little bit messy. Ooh, yeah, this is nice. Now I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush and just blend the edges of this out because I don't want it to be as sharp. Now we're gonna go in for lips. I don't wanna do anything too super extreme because I feel like I do have a lot going on on the eyes, so I don't wanna do like a bright red lip or something, but I am going to use something that has a little bit of color. It's not just a nude because I feel like, I mean, this is pretty much what it would look like if it was just a nude and I just feel like it's not like you know, done, put together. So I'm gonna take the Milani Color Statement Lip Liner in the color 03 Nude, and then the Too Faced Melted Lipstick in Chihuahua. I've been absolutely obsessed with this and wearing it in like all of my recent videos. That is pretty much what I'm wearing. So I'm just gonna line my lips, fill them in with this, and that's our look. Oh, and I have to do some lower mascara. I feel like I've said to finish up the look so many times, but this actually is going to be to finish up the look. And our last step, I'm going to take some mascara and just do a quick coat on the top just to kind of make sure that my natural lashes and the fake lashes like stick together and are all, you know, kind of intertwined almost. And then also just a thin coat on the lower lash line. I don't mind chunky mascara on the top, but I do not like it on my lower lashes. So while the mascara is still wet, I just take a spoolie and kind of rake some of the excess mascara out of the lower lashes. All right guys, this is the finished look. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please make sure you let me know in the comments, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you are not already subscribed, and let me know if you like this format of video where I start off without any makeup and I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing, but then we kind of figure it out together along the way. I am really happy with how this look turned out. I feel like it's something that I don't typically do. I feel like usually I go for more like blended eyeshadow looks and just to me, this is pretty dramatic. I noticed some of you this might not be dramatic at all and some of you this may be like too dramatic so I know that everyone is like all different ways with what they like but I really really like this I'm definitely gonna wear it for Valentine's Day and I feel like my eyelids kind of match my backdrop which was not planned but I love it and I feel like it's glittery and girly and sparkly and I am just loving this look so if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Let me know if I should film more of these or if you have any video requests and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.